if you step back a little bit, you're testing whether or not this person really wants to work with you. And if they're not interested in working with you, no matter what kind of skills, verbal ninjutsu skills that you might have, they're, they're not, it's not going to work. So don't waste your time with them. To retain the higher ground in the conversation, don't pursue. The perspective that I most align with, which is what uh, Blair Enns is going to say, and that comes straight from the Win Without Pitching Manifesto. Blair's perspective is that when you chase after someone and you chase after a job, their tendency is to want to run away. And it happens in dating, it happens in nature. If you feel chased, you feel threatened, you feel like the other person's desperate, that there's something else at hand. But what you want to do is uh, practice something that he calls retreat and follow. It's a very basic concept and every relationship this is true, which is you take a half step back to see if the person's interested and they naturally will follow. For example, if you are at a party or something and you just take a half step back, people will move towards you if they're interested or they'll leave. Okay. And we like to pursue people and we don't like to be pursued. So when I say you should try to kill the engagement at least three times, that's straight from the win without pitching manifesto is you say things to make sure that the other party is really engaged. Jonathan Stark has a very simple formula on how to do this. He says, ask three why questions. Why this? Like, why do we need to do this? Why now? Why can't we wait? And then why me? Of all the options you have, why would you want to work with me? Because I'm more likely to come in more expensive than everyone else. And depending on how you phrase this in terms of your tonality, it's very effective because they're like, well, I really do need to do this because this is really important to our company. You notice you took a half step, half step back. Well, why don't you just wait? Why, why not do nothing? Well, no, it's really urgent. We need to do this now because our business depends on it. There's thousands of dollars on the line if we don't nail this, okay? And lastly, why me? Well, we heard great things about you. We saw things on your website that look exactly like where we want to go with this. And so in that way, they are selling themselves to themselves in front of you. So you take away all the convincing, you take away all the persuasion and the selling and the pitching by just asking three why questions. Now, when you read other uh, negotiation books, other sales books, they're going to say very similar things. Um, and there's more nuance here. If you read Chris Voss's book, Never Split the Difference, he'll say ask calibrated questions uh, and he recommends not asking why questions because if you don't phrase it right, if your tone isn't right, it can make the person feel really defensive. So uh, if you are still practicing your client communication skills and your objection responding uh, skills, I would encourage you at this point in time to use the what questions and not even to ask the how questions. What questions really are open-ended and it's easier for people to remain neutral and objective, okay? So what happens if you don't move forward with this project? What happens if you just wait versus why? So let me recap here because there's a lot to process. If you step back a little bit, you're testing whether or not this person really wants to work with you. And if they're not interested in working with you, no matter what kind of skills, verbal ninjutsu skills that you might have, they're, they're not, it's not going to work. So don't waste your time with them. To retain the higher ground, in the conversation, don't pursue. And you do that by retreating. Hi, my name is Greg Gunn and I'm the producer of The Future Podcast. And yes, we do have a podcast. In fact, we've been having one for years and that's exactly why I'm here talking with you. You see, it's really good and I think you should listen to it. If you like what we do here on YouTube, then you're gonna love what we do on the podcast. You'll get to hear intimate conversations and personal stories from some familiar faces and others you might not know about yet. Plus, you can listen to it while doing something else and you won't miss a thing. So, if any of that sounds interesting to you, go visit thefuture.com slash podcast or find it on your favorite podcast listening app. I hope to see you there.